ghosts and goblins, my name is Devious Guy, and welcome back to the boss designs of Dark Souls. Now, last time, we failed to kill a boss, or rather, we made the decision not to kill Priscilla, <clears throat> sitting up there in her dark tower in the painted world. And that's a decision that so far has been borne out by the little poll I put up. It seems like the community has decided that we will not be killing Priscilla, in fact, and we've done enough analysis as it is. So I will uh, take a look at, like, her item descriptions on the wiki at some point, and, you know, maybe we'll do a little follow-up video or something along those lines. Maybe we'll incorporate it into something in the future. <clears throat> if there's anything important in there to talk about. Uh, but other otherwise, we are going to be moving on to the next area that we need to conquer. Now, see, I don't know where the Witch of Isolith is. I have, I really, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of assuming she's somewhere near the discharge because she's a fire witch and the ceaseless discharge is a fire thing that looks chaotic and like there's chaos spiders and stuff down there. It seems like a place a witch would hang out. So that's probably somewhere at the bottom of Blight Town if I had to go looking, but I do know where the four kings of New Londo are, or at least I, I assume I do. They probably at the end of New Londo is my presumption. Let's go to the place that I've been trying to avoid for this entire playthrough. <laughs> Let's go meet the ghosts. Like the first time I ran into New Londo was on accident because I was just exploring around Firelink Shrine and I took this like elevator down and there was like the new Londo ruins and I was just like, this feels like the kind of area that would be in the game for you to wander into and then get your ass completely handed to you for the game to demonstrate that, you know, it's, it's merciless and it hates you. <clears throat> and so I decided to stay away from it. I feel like my voice sounds strained today. And that's probably because it is. I still haven't recovered after doing a five-hour live stream where I ranked all the League of Legends champions by character design. That takes a lot more out of your voice than you'd think. Okay. Hurdle number one, don't fall into the water. I should probably equip those transient curses, shouldn't I? I bet they're, te like, they're temporary, which means they're probably going to run out at like the worst possible moment if I don't have them ready. Oh, hello. That's a ghost. Oh, you have blades for hands. Hi. Please go away. Oh, well. Everything down here is creepy. Why is it quiet? I don't like it when it's quiet. Ah! Oh, I guess you can just appear. I guess that's a thing you can do. Oh! God, okay. Jerks. I'm gonna, yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, oh good, great, that's fantastic. Please, please be dead quickly. Uh, okay, well, they actually don't do that much damage to me. And I guess they can't curse me because I have transient curse on or something? Okay, ah! <laughs> but they sure keep coming. And the ghosts keep coming and they don't stop 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 coming. They don't stop coming and they don't stop coming. They don't stop coming, they don't stop coming, they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming and they're inside the walls. Okay, I'm getting a slight feeling I may be a little overpowered for the area, which I am entirely fine with. I'm terrible at horror games. I am absolutely awful at all horror-themed games at all, of all kinds. Like, I just, I have never gotten more than like 10 or 20 minutes into Silent Hill, <laughs> basically. Oh, there's a man in a jar. The less successful follow-up to Dick in a Box. <laughs> yeah, okay, both ghosts and baths. Oh, Firekeeper Soul. Poor creature. Okay, moving on. I'm less scared now, but still, I do know that it's the four kings of New Londo, which is like, that's not three, or two, or one, that's four. Quick mess! That's a lot. I hope they don't do too much damage. <clears throat> no boss, please, that will be too soon. No boss. But plenty of opportunities to fall down and die. Which is probably going to kill me more than anything else here, really. Okay. 
I'm gonna predict that I'm gonna go over there to get that item and then ghosts are gonna show up behind me. Oh, no, just... above me. Oh, jeez, okay. Oh, the curse has run out. No, not humanity, that's not what I wanted. Well, okay. Stop that. Ah, well, yes. Like I said, falling down is probably gonna be the thing that kills me more. That's, uh... Ghosts 1, TV Sky 0. So, ghost lore in, in Europe is actually something I know a little bit about, because I live in a country that has, like, a hundred haunted castles everywhere. No, I want you to attack the one next to you, you dumbass. And in, at least in Danish ghost lore, there is a generally two kinds of ghosts um, that you have to worry about. There's grey ladies, which typically haunt castles. Uh, they'll be the ghosts of noble women or high-ranking servants who used to live there. And white ladies. And... Depending, and sometimes you also get brown ladies, um, depending on the color of the shade they are as they drift through the castles. And it sort of it sort of varies from location to location, but generally speaking, the white ladies are sort of fine. They just like they just float around the castle and sometimes they find lost items and stuff. They're generally benevolent and not really dangerous, although you shouldn't mess with them. But then there's the other kind. Then there's the gray ladies, and they are not generally benevolent. They are not generally fine. They are, in fact, really, 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 really dangerous and malevolent, and if they get a hold of you, they will try to suck the life out of you. Literally just suck the life force from you. The way to deal with them is either to utter a prayer or to make the signal of the cross across your chest or... Any number of other little ritualistic behaviors that are supposed to ward them off. But mostly the way that you avoid, you know, having an angry ghost deal with you is just not interfere with them. Just don't mess with them, just don't be where they are. And don't disrespect the buildings that they call home. Which uh, sometimes uh, is like you hear hauntings that, you know, affect re uh, renovation projects where they're tearing down old walls and stuff and hauntings that affect, you know, new construction on the grounds of some old castle that the ghost has decided that it doesn't like because it desecrates her grave or something along those lines. Lots of good old ghost stories. One that scared the absolute living f daylight out of me when I was a kid was a story I heard when I visited a, a castle not too far from where I grew up, um, specifically about a, a gray lady and this gray lady was the, you know, the dead spirit of a noble woman who had lived in the castle in, in, her, in her lifetime and who had had a lover, uh, an illicit love affair, a lover with whom she wanted to run away, who had betrayed her, basically left her for dead on the moors out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so she had started haunting the castle where she had lived uh, as a child and... If you, like, and generally speaking, if, if you were a woman, she would leave you alone. If you were, uh, blonde, she'd leave you alone. But if you had brown hair, she would mistake you for the lover who betrayed her. And she would come find you in the night. And she would crawl onto your bed while you slept. And she would try to strangle you, uh, in your sleep with ghostly hands that you wouldn't be able to feel. You would just, you'd just lose your oxygen and pass out and, oh, that's a lot of you. And pass out and die before you woke up, and you wouldn't be able to do anything about it, and then you'd find your corpse in the morning with, like, strangle strangulation marks around... Oh my god. Around your neck. And that would be yet another murder chalked up to the Grey Lady of the castle. And I don't need to tell you, like, I have brown hair! <laughs> so, like, ten-year-old me just could not fall asleep for days after hearing that story. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, she's gonna kill me! <laughs> I have brown hair! She's gonna try and get me! I don't wanna get, get me! <laughs> oh, and people wonder why I have anxiety. But yeah, so if you're visiting an old 
Danish castle and you see a gray shade of a lady floating through the hallways. Just get out of the way. Don't let her see you. Just get away from her very quickly. If you see a white lady, just, just you know, respectfully let her pass by without causing her any trouble. And you'll probably be fine. This one doesn't activate either, right? No. Okay, so there's a elevator that goes all the way from the top to all the way to the bottom, it looks like. Which... Huh. I wonder how you're supposed to access, because, like, presumably jumping down is fatal. Yeah, very fatal. Hello. I should find a MIDI version of the Ghostbusters theme and do, like, a montage of me killing ghosts to it. <laughs> So, how do I... Am I supposed to go in here? What is in here? Okay! Okay, that scared the crap out of me. Okay, so a ghost saw me, I think. And there she is, coming for me. Fortunately, I have a big f*** off sword. With which I can tell you... To f*** up. Uh, hi. Just, do, do you have a ladder? Well, this doesn't look fatal. There we go. Give my life, not for honor, but for you. Hi. Um, you're not gonna, like, attack me, right? I mean, I doesn't seem like you would, but... Well, this is a surprise. I get few visitors, save for ghosts. Maybe that's because you live in the middle of, like, ghost town. Very impressive. I know exactly what your intentions are. You seek the four kings whom I guard over. This is the key to the seal. Oh, uh, thanks. The four kings slumber in the deepest chamber of the ruins. Use this key to break the seal and open the floodgates. Oh, and do not forget, the dark wraiths reside in a dark void called the Abyss. But the Abyss is no place for ordinary mortals. Although, long ago, the Knight Artorius oh. traversed the Abyss. If you can find him and learn from him, the abyss may prove surmountable. I see. So now I know what I'm supposed to do with that goddamn ring. Londo was sacrificed to contain the dark wraiths. Mark my words. The dark wraiths are the enemies of man and any living thing that has a soul. They were never meant to roam again. Anyway... Let's go kill the big ghosts. The four king ghosts. Okay, was it... There was a place where the, the elevator was where I could... do a thing with a lever. Was it down here? No? No, right? No. Oh, it's over here! Right, 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 right. So presumably the key is going to be for this. Yes. And then we push that thing. That was the door in the... Ah, okay. Well, now I understand why I couldn't open it. <laughs> now I see. Hey, hello. Right. So my guess is this just leads me out onto the floodplain. Oh, that's a lot of corpses... 
Oh, those are all cor- Oh, it's just- No, it's nothing but corpses. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, that- mm, Okay. Well. Corpse city- Oh! What the he Oh, you look skeleton-y. Oh, this is- Oh, boy. Oh, this is a lot of... Well, I get why there are ghosts here now. Oh, hello. Hi. I would like you to not do whatever the hell that is. I don't know what you were doing, but I'm glad you stopped. Oh, hello, Skull Knight guy. Your outfit is really cool, though. Like... Can I equip that at some point? I would love to, because... That's a badass set of armor, right there. Okay, so how many of the- Oh, <laughs> Oh, Lord. I'm just gonna take a guess and say that- Oh, wow, you have a lot of health. Oh, sh- Whoa! Oh, boy. Not good. Not great. What the- Ah! Ah! What the- No! No! So he can do that. And presumably that just dr drains my health like a mother- <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, bad touch. And he can cause- he has got the spirit backing him up. Did he make that or was that just kind of there? Hey, please activate and explode. Thank you. Oh, God. Oh, hello. Hi. You and I are not gonna make out like that. I am not that kind of boy. I don't do that on the first date. I don't care what anyone's told you. Those are rumors. I do it on the second date. What the heck is- oh, it's not one of those. I'm a little annoyed I can't knock them down. That's always been my favorite thing about the Zweihinder is that I can knock people down with it. Those guys just stay standing. I want that magic shield thing that looks so cool! I don't want that <clears throat> sucky sucky hand gesture there. Captain Bad Touch over here. Learn to respect some consent, man. Oh, Lord! Oh, die, 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 Oh, because it's underwater. I guess that makes sense. And there's nothing else here. Okay. Seriously though, a bonfire would be good. I wouldn't mind that. I, I, I would be completely okay with a bonfire. Oh, please no bosses. Oh, okay, yes, bosses actually. I'm tempted to Homeward Bone right now. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Because I'm reasonably sure that I'm gonna die. That'll do for that. There you are. I'll be heading down below shortly. There's nothing worthwhile up above. No worries. Venturing is my life. I'm prepared for the worst. <laughs> I, uh, well, okay. That kind of character dialogue is the signal that tells me he's gonna die. <laughs> Like, it feels a lot like the the last thing a guy says before we find him tragically murdered somewhere. Ah, better. Plus four. Okay. Right. So, uh, finding my way back to where the four kings were hiding out. It was up here, right? Yeah, and there was another slime in there who's gone now? He's gone! Ah! F***ing hell! That scared the crap out of me. Ha ha ha! Knocking him down! Ha 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 ha! I love knocking them down. Okay. Well. Down we go. Down, down, down into the abyss.
Well, okay. There's all these other elevators around here, but... Not here, I guess. Uh, is it just me, or do the stairs just kind of stop? Was there a door somewhere? No, I guess the abyss is something you have to jump into. Okay. I'm not gonna die, right? No! Uh... Ah! Oh, jeez, okay. Um... Oh, you're ugly. I should not unequip my shield right now. I should not be doing that. Where the hell is he? I can't tell. Okay, he can do that. Well, I can do this. Yeah, well, I agree. Yours thing, your thing is pretty kind of cool. Okay, well, you are looking all gnarly. He looks a little like a tree. I take it he's only one of four, but I don't know where the other four are. I don't care, though. If I can kill one of them immediately before the other ones show up, I'll be very happy. Oh, there they are. Hello. I see you. Okay, that's one. That's one. Okay. Uh, where's the other? Oh, <laughs> there he is. Oh, he's got bigger horns, too. What the? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I don't have any humanity for him to drain. I think if that's what he's doing. Oh, please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so these guys... They look essentially like tree people. Like, they look like people who've sort of dried up and turned into twigs, almost. Like, you've got that leaf-like structure going on around them. That's highly distinctive, I have to say. Ow. Okay. Uh, must drink orange juice! I think the other one's caught up to me. I feel like he's right behind me. Where is he? I don't know where anything is. Yeah, there he is. Hello. Go away. No, go away. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So they're differentiated primarily by the shape of their horns, I guess? Or not even... Th oh, there's the third one. This is not great. Okay, I can see all three of you now, you f***s. Okay. Well, this is an unusual fight. Please die! Okay. 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 Two. Two. I can manage two of them. Uh, why are there three of them again? I- I killed two of you! What is this? Oh my god. Okay. Uh, so yeah, th so there's, there's there's hints of being like a leaf-like, tree-like structure going on with them, but at the same time also, I don't know what that is, don't do it. No, go away! Oh my god. Okay, that missed. Which is bad. But at the same time, I mean, so you've got the horns that are standing in for crowns, basically. Which is what gives them that regal bearing. And at the same time, also, the, the, the leaf-like and, and the wing-like... Oh my god, now there's four of them. Okay, I guess there's just four of them permanently. I guess that's what's going on here. And I just have to deplete their health until they stop being four. <laughs> oh no... No, 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 no. Ah. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. 
I'm sounding like Rick from Rick and Morty, but with a manlier voice. No! Oh, jeez, Rick! I don't know! <laughs> ah! Stop doing that to me! <laughs> okay, you die. Go away. Just for a little bit. Just... Oh, my God. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is so stressful. Oh, for f sake! Why? Why are you so close to me? Oh, here comes a spell. That's a magic spell. It's gonna hit me in the face. I'm close to killing them, but it doesn't feel that way. Ah. Uh... No! Okay, fine. It gives me a little relief from the other ones, I guess. Temporarily. Kind of. I feel like locking on is just kind of a bad idea in this fight, because... Oh my god, okay. Oh, there's four of them again. They are all back together. Great. Which is also interesting, because that gives me the sense that they are less four entities than they are actually one entity in four incarnations, or split into four, or whatever the case may be. Okay, could you not... Could you just not for a sec? Do those spells just never stop chasing you? Oh, they're surrounding me now. Yeah. I'm dead. I'm so dead. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe soon. I'm running out of Estus, that's for damn sure. I have to do some damage. Hmm. Take advantage of the invincibility frames of just being knocked on my ass. Oh my god, I'm close. I'm close, though! Come on! Oh! <laughs> oh, good lord. Oh, good lord. Holy shit. <sighs> oh, f hell. F oh my god, my heart. Ah. <sighs> Uh, well, that was stressful. If I had had any less than 20 Estus flasks, I would have been so very dead. They looked like something that was once beautiful and full of splendor and life that then withered into a shell or a husk of what it once was, and the fact that they kept respawning the bastards made me feel like I wasn't fighting four kings, but one entity of some kind. And I guess if we need more information about that, this is the best we're gonna get. Soul of one of the four kings who fell to dark. A fragment of Lord's soul discovered at the dawn of the Age of Fire. Lord Gwyn recognized the foresight of these great four great leaders of New Londo and granted them ranks in the fragments of a great soul. Although this is not a full Lord soul, it can still satiate the Lord vessel. Once again, we get the thing where it's not a Lord soul that I'm collecting. I'm collecting the embers of a Lord soul. I'm collecting a shard of a Lord soul. Which much, which is the thing we've been talking about with the last two bosses, is that that seems to be the theme that's going on here, is that you're not, no matter what you do, no matter how many commands you follow, you will never recreate the Age of Fire in its full splendor. You will only recreate some half measure that will need to be refreshed again in a sort of inevitable downward spiral of diminishing returns. So this is the soul of one of the four kings, and we saw one of the four kings die. But when one of the four kings died, all of the four kings died, and they all shared the same health bar, but they were four different people, and they had four different fragments of a great soul, at least according to this lore text. Like, they granted them the ranks and the fragments of a great soul. That's fragments multiple. 
So there once was four kings of New Londo, but now only pale echoes of them remain? Some singular entity? Hmm, this is a little bit... This is a little bit screwy. I was right to be scared of them! <laughs> I don't think I could have beaten them at any previous point in the game. Because... <laughs> especially near the end, good grief they were beating on me. Well, we'll go give the shard of the Lord Soul to the Lord Vessel. And then we'll send it over to Future Skyen. Yeah, you just keep sleeping, Framped. You keep sleeping. I don't need you right now. I don't need your help at all. And then we will go to Future Skyen, who will perhaps be able to talk a little bit more about the Four Kings. I feel like they're a little bit... They're a little bit more enigmatic than the other bosses we've been fighting so far, in that they don't seem to... There doesn't seem to be that much to them. They don't seem to have that much personality. Unlike someone like, indeed, Priscilla, who we didn't fight last time, who had a lot of personality, sort of implied in her character. But these guys just kind of look terrifying. So, yeah. I don't think I can really think of anything more, because I've still got adrenaline pumping through my system. So I'm going to send it over to you, future Skyen. Well, thank you very much, Pat Skyen. Yet another <laughs> managing to kill the boss in the first attempt, although this one was a little bit too close for comfort. So, the Four Kings of New Londo. Now, as far as I can tell from reading up on some of the lore around them uh, using the wikis, they are four separate entities. They are four separate people who were eventually corrupted by something, something, and fell to dark because of some reasons. Yet, when we fight them in-game, they share a health bar, they share character designs, they seem, at least insofar as I could make out from looking at the footage, to be entirely identical characters, and of course, they respawn when you kill them. There will always be four kings of New Londo, no matter how many of them you destroy until you deplete their shared health bar. Which presents us with a couple of interesting questions, because when we kill them, we only receive one shard of a Lord Soul. We don't receive the full four shards of Lord Souls that one assumes the four kings were once bequeathed by Gwyn. And I feel like there might be a point to that peculiar ambiguity where the four kings are both four separate creatures, but also not. They are also one entity altogether. This could be a side effect of their corruption and their fall to darkness that it has obliterated their individuality, or it could be a wider commentary on the ways in which holding an office, holding a position of power, can obliterate your personal identity. I happen to live in a country that still has a monarchy, and, well, we don't really think of royalty as people. Uh, in the traditional sense of the word. Even when we discuss them by name, there's always the sense that we are talking not so much about a person, but about the office of being the queen, the office of being a prince or a princess, the office of being royalty. Any discussion of the person inevitably is subsided into a discussion of the office itself, of the position. And this is something that's actually borne out in history. Especially in absolutist monarchies, it was often common to speak of the king not so much as an individual person, but as a almost godlike special being ordained by God to rule over others. The office of the king is often much more powerful than any individual king who happens to occupy it. The power of the crown of royal office to transform people is a theme that has been explored, well, most recently in a series like Game of Thrones, but even by Shakespeare in his plays about Henry IV and Henry V, heavy is the head that wears the crown. So perhaps to be a king of New Londo is to be nothing but a king of New Londo, one in a succession of power holders whose individual aspirations, hopes, dreams, and morality really aren't important when compared to the infinite weight of the crown of power. And while this is a fairly esoteric bit of speculation, I am curious to hold up the four kings of New Londo against the King of Sunlight, against King Gwyn himself when we meet him. Because when we do, will he be a person? A unique individual who has hopes and dreams and aspirations for Lord Ran, or will he be merely yet another avatar of power? Yet another thing consumed by the power of the Lord Souls? But there is also some evidence in the character design to suggest a theme of obliteration of personhood. 
When you look at the kings of New Londo, well, I mean, the first thing you're going to notice is that they look like withered old husks of trees. Like, they look like something that was once alive that has been drained entirely of power and has almost petrified. Like old ashen leaves or some ancient marble sculpture that exploded. But take a closer look at where that explosion originated. Where all these fluttering explosive plumes of material originate right in the chest right where the heart is supposed to be and again maybe this is merely a visual signifier of their corruption that they have literally had their hearts torn out of them but also think about what it means when someone is said to be heartless or soulless I am a little bit intrigued by some other parts of the aesthetic choices, because like I've mentioned many times during the fight, they look like withered leaves, like they look like old tree branches. And so certainly that comes across a lot in the texture, but more than that, they also look like old, white, bleached marble. And that's a really interesting couple of aesthetic choices to combine, because of course, organic material and stone statues are typically constructed as some version of opposites, really. And while I'm not sure I have a coherent thematic point to make in pointing out that interesting design contradiction in the way that they are created, I do think there is definitely a point to the fact that the kings are made to look like, you know, marble statues. You know, the one material and type of expression that is most commonly associated with kings, queens, rulers, and emperors of empires that have long ago decayed and disintegrated. As for other design elements, well, the horns that are sitting atop their head, of course, evoke the imagery of a crown. This is something we talked about all the way back when we dealt with the Asylum Demon, who kind of had the same thing going on with a crown of bone on its head that sort of indicated its status as king of the undead asylum. And the big, withered, leafy extensions that burst out of their bodies also have the added effect of giving them sort of the idea, the visual signifier of wearing some sort of large, elaborate outfit, a cape or some kind of a gaudy, expensive outfit that only royalty could ever afford to wear and which therefore is a symbol of their power of office. So yeah, the Four Kings are a mix of interesting, unique design elements and a somewhat opaque lore position that implies an interesting thematic connection to the themes of, you know, the corrupting nature of power and what exactly might be the point of perpetuating the Age of Fire and stuff like that, which might be more clarified once we link up with the big main king of the game, who is, of course, Lord Gwyn. That, though, is probably still quite a few episodes away. So, if you've enjoyed this episode of Boss Designs of Dark Souls, well, feel very free to you know, comment, like, subscribe, do the YouTube thing, hit the bell icon, yada, yada, yada. And additionally, if you happen to know someone who quite likes Dark Souls and who might be interested in watching like a playthrough like this where I do some analysis stuff, please do share it with them, share it on subreddits and stuff like that. This particular series doesn't generate a lot of views through YouTube's algorithms alone. So, in order for this series to grow at all, I very much depend on the generosity of you guys in, you know, pointing other people who might be interested in my particular direction. You can, of course, also support the channel directly, which is absolutely the number one most powerful way that you could ever help a content creator. I have a Patreon, where you can sign up for a monthly subscription if you want to, or I have some tip jars down in the description that you can use to give me like a one-time tip to say, hey, you made a video about Dark Souls that was pretty decent, you can have three dollars, thank you very much, and as I say at the end of my videos, even one or two dollars to a content creator online can be the same as thousands of views on a video or even tens of thousands of views on a website that's run on ad revenue. Even very small amounts matter a lot more than you think. So whether it's me or whether it's someone else, if there's a content creator online whose work you admire, please consider signing up to support them or give them tips in whatever way you can because it helps us a lot more than you probably think. Of course, if you can't or you're just not willing to do those direct donations, don't worry about it. It is enough that you watch our content and, I don't know, maybe click the like button and share or something like that. That's also very helpful. But yeah, mostly I just want to say thank you very much for watching another episode of The Boss Designs of Dark Souls. If you haven't enjoyed this video, well, there is a dislike button down below, which you may click if you want to, if you dare to wield that power over the algorithm, you may click the dislike button, you may take that power into your hands, but many years from now, when you stare at yourself back in the mirror, will you see a person or the cold, dead-eyed face 
of one who would be king, but who can never be anything else.